Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be explaining my thesis of why I am buying more Starbucks, ticker symbol S Bucks, why I continue to add to my position despite the recent headwinds, and why I still think the company is going to perform very well long term. If you're going to enjoy the video, please make sure to like and subscribe, join the Discord. And before we get into why I'm continuing to buy Starbucks, let's roll the intro. I've been a rich man and I have been a poor man, and I choose rich every I make investing content and my channel is Dividend Dude. You should leave a like and subscribe if you're going to enjoy the video. As a disclaimer, this is not financial advice. I am just a dividend growth investor trying to share my takes on dividend growth stocks and various other stocks. This is not financial or investment advice and always do your own due diligence before investing. Now talking about why I think Starbucks will recover, I think it's important to mention the deals that they've been running ever since that bad Q1. We can see here on my X page, I said Starbucks, uh, ticker symbol S Bucks, coming in with another great deal. You can now get a $3 grande drink from Starbucks from Monday to Wednesday at 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. EST. I'll be using this deal tomorrow. The value is being provided. The people are buying. The rewards members are increasing. Bullish. Now, the reason I said this is because this is not the first deal they've ran. This is the most recent one, and they've actually ran about three or four deals. They had a Mother's Day deal, and they have a deal uh, for every single Friday in May. We're going to get half off a drink. So if you pay like $7, you only have to pay like three fifty dollars uh, for Mother's Day. They did a buy one, get one free. And they're running these deals that are bringing a lot of people who are concerned about price back to redeem these deals, uh, still get their star rewards. And it really kind of takes into the fact that they're, I think next quarter, their rewards members are going to significantly recover link quarter. And I also think that the bank aspect of the app is really being flexed here as they're going to collect interest on the deposits in their Starbucks app. Um, as well as I think the deals they're executing in terms of communicating value, I didn't really like that corporate spiel talk from Laxman in the interview, but I do think they are communicating value to the consumer, uh, to the customer, that the deals are better. And they also introduced a new drink. Let's go over and tab over to that now. Here is the new drink they released. It's a Summer Skies Drink Starbucks Refresher Beverage. You can get it in a lemonade, you can get it frozen, or you can just get it as a refresher. I think this is the lemonade one. But you can see on the bottom, it's kind of like a boba. This thing, I think, will bring in a lot of growth. And it's kind of going to uh, keep uh, cementing Starbucks as that place where you can get any drink. You can get a juice, you can get a refresher, you can get a coffee, you can get a frappuccino, you can get a latte, you can get a mocha, you can get an espresso, you can get a hot or cold coffee. You can get uh, a boba now. This is kind of like boba with those raspberry bubbles on the bottom you can get different lemonades and different frozen drinks it's kind of cementing itself in that space and they also offer nice little pastries and obviously it being like a third place where the experience is at most importance people are going to be buying stuff like this while they're doing their work and especially in college while you're doing your work you maybe buy this or other different pastries and i think deals like i said are going to bring people back to the app going to bring people back to the stores going to bring people back to doing work in the stores and different things like that so i think they're executing in that department it's going to seeking alpha to analyze a bit further here on seeking alpha we could take a look at the metrics obviously this one down 30 percent over the past year down 21 percent year to date and i think the company's currently trading cheaply right now i mean in the next 10 years i think this company is going to be significantly higher with a lot more stores, a bigger global presence, they're going to be making more profit, they're going to be making more revenue. It's just about short-term headwinds, which this company's undergone, and all companies have undergone headwinds at some point. Starbucks is not the first to do it. And I think we have to give our, the new CEO a chance, and I think he is proving himself with the new boba category they're opening, and obviously the different deals they're running, like I said before. I think that recovery, uh, that quarter was a wake-up call for them, and I think they are going to have a recovery quarter, and even if they don't, I'm sticking out with them for the long term. We can take a look at the company's financials, where obviously on a yearly basis, the revenue has grown uh, very consistently. The problem is when we look when we look at this company on the quarterly basis, sorry, uh, the file got a little corrupted. When we look at the revenues on a quarterly basis, we can see that they are obviously uh, declining quarter to quarter, link quarter here from uh, the last quarter of 2023, the first quarter of 2024, uh, which is obviously not a good thing. And like I said before, I think this is for six reasons. 
six reasons. It's a myriad of six reasons hitting them all at once. I think they uh, raised the prices too fast, which I would like to see them slightly decrease the prices. We've seen this with other uh, major corporations and companies like PepsiCo and McDonald's, which raised the prices too fast, missed on earnings as well. It was just for Starbucks, it was bigger because it's a coffee chain. And uh, while they're raising the prices, they're facing increased competition. And in North America specifically, they're facing economic issues with the low income consumer, which is obviously a big demographic for all fast food and coffee chains. Not only this, but internationally, they're facing uh uh, boycotts and protests and in North America they're also facing unionizations as well as internationally so about five or six problems hitting them all at once and it's obviously going to hurt their bottom line it's going to hurt the revenues which we're seeing in real time but long term I don't think this uh, represents that much of an issue for them so as their income statement you can see the revenues uh, looking all right I mean link quarter not looking too good we also take a look at this company's earnings per share. We could take a look at their basic earnings per share, which we could see obviously in the most recent quarter is not looking good. If we take a look at all these metrics on an annual basis, though, looks a lot better because we can zoom out and take a look at their earnings per share, uh, which has increased quite consistently over time on an annual basis. So that's very good for Starbucks right there. Now, I do want to talk about their balance sheet because there's a lot of concerns regarding their balance sheet. And in terms of cash, they're doing all right with close to $5 billion in cash. But in terms of their balance sheet, uh, they do have a good amount of assets. But let's get to the debt. This is what a lot of people are concerned about. And if we take a look at the company's long-term debt, we could see they have a little bit over $10 billion in debt. And many people don't like this as the company generates about $4 billion in free cash flow per year. A lot of people don't realize, though, that most of this debt is actually in the form of capital leases. We could see about $8 billion dollars of this debt is in capital leases. So the real long-term debt they have is about a year's worth of their free cash flow or about $4 billion of debt. Another good thing about this company is that if we take a look at their shares outstanding over time, they are buying back stock. So they're increasing value to you as the shareholder. We can take a look at this company's net income, which has increased consistently on an annual basis, but obviously on those that quarterly basis, the net income is struggling because of the most recent quarter they had, which sent the stock price tumbling. We can take a look at the company on a dividend basis, which like I explained before, the yield is pretty good um, at about 3%. And we can see the payout ratio means the dividend is safe and there's still ample room to grow uh, that dividend as the dividend has been growing at a five-year CAGR of 10% with a dividend growth history of 13 years. So over the past 10 years, this company's grown the dividend from 13 cents to 57 cents. Incredible dividend growth for Starbucks. Now, what I think makes this company so attractive here is the valuation of it comboed with the high growth rates that I think we're going to see over the next decade to come. We could take a look at the trailing 12 month uh, price to earnings of Starbucks at 21, which is 31% cheaper than its five year average. And in terms of a forward price to earnings, it's actually even better at 21. Uh, and this is actually 41% cheaper than what it usually trades at. We could actually also chart this, which I do want to do, as I haven't not been using Seeking Alpha's charting feature, which is very in depth. We could take a look at the valuation tab and we could actually chart this company from multiple different metrics. But we're going to take a look at this company on a price to cash flow basis, as I believe that's one of the best bases to look in terms of uh, valuing the company. On a price to cash flow basis, lower is better. And as you can see on the one year chart, this company's at the lowest price to cash flow it's been in the past year. Over the past three years, this company's still at the lowest price to cash flow it's been. It usually trades at a price to cash flow. It seems like about uh, 22, maybe a little bit over 20. And right now it's trading at a price to cash flow of 13. Over the past five years, it's still trading at an incredibly low rate. It's only been trading lower uh, in 2019. So the company's trading at an incredibly low rate. And even over the past 10 years, only during COVID have, has the company traded at a cheaper price to cash flow rate. So you're getting an incredible discount in the long term with Starbucks if you're buying the company here. So overall, I think this is a very good time to buy the company for the long term. Let me know what you guys think down below. Join the Discord. It's been improving very fast. And you can get a link uh, to Seeking Alpha in the description. You can get a large discount. See you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Peace.